Hello friends, hope you all are doing well. So starting with our next session, today we'll do lab on uh, a dynamic IP. So let, uh, let's discuss about the lab topology we are going to use uh, for this one. Uh, so as you can uh, see from the screen, we have a Palo Alto firewall and on the left we have three PCs. Uh, with the IP address 10.5, 10.6, and 10.7. Then uh, we have a firewall in between, and then there is one uh, server on internet with 1.1.1.2. So it's a simple uh, topology. Right. So now uh, let's start with the configuration for dynamic NAT. Uh, so lab is same as of uh, last session. So all the initial configuration has been uh, explained in that one. So in this session, we'll directly go into doing a lab for dynamic NAT. Fine. So basically what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to assign one dynamic IP address for source address translation, right? and uh, we'll initiate telnet connection from this test pc towards the server and we'll see how the translation work secondly we'll initiate another session from this pc2 towards the internet and we should see a, a packet dropped as the nat ip utilization has already been done so this is the objective for this lab let's see how it goes okay so uh, as the basic routing has been already done let's start with doing the configuration for NAT so in the original packet will mention as a zone so basically as this is an ingress zone traffic is coming on ingress zone will mention the zone as ingress and destination zone would be egress as the traffic is going towards the internet so it will be the egress zone source address we will mention here as 192.168.10.5 right then 192.168.10.6 then 192.168.10.7 so this uh, these three pcs basically we have and the destination address we have is 1.1.1.2 okay translation so here is basically we are going to do a dynamic ip and the translation we are going to do is on IP address 10.10.1.200. Let's say 200. Okay, so this is how our dynamic would look like. So it will be traffic would be coming into egress zone, going to egress, egress destination zone, source address mentioned, destination mentioned, and dynamic IP should be. Uh, dynamic IP is 1.1.1.200. Next comes the security policy. So security policy, uh, okay, it's already here. So it mentions uh, the traffic is coming on to ingress, going using this IP addresses, and it's going to egress uh, for for that particular our external server IP address and applications are allowed so hit count is zero here okay let's uh, do comment in the meantime let's get access for pc1 okay So 
that's the firewall commit has been done fine now let's test the connectivity so we are going to initiate the net connection to it's our fingers for username right so as you can see it's connected to this server now let's come to firewall and check session so we can see that the flag is ns that says it's a source net then the ip address is 192.168.10.5 with source port of port 5091 it's going it's translated to 200 ip address that we have mentioned and source port remains unchanged and it's going to destination 1.1.2 or port 23 okay if we look at session id then we can see that it is using our dynamic NAT rule, right? And uh, dynamic NAT rule, it's a, it's a security rule and NAT rule is dynamic NAT. So basically it's using these two rules. Ingress zone is our inside and egress zone is ETH one slash two. So that says, that dynamic net is working fine now next we will see what happens when this pc2 initiates connection towards internet server again okay So now let's initiate the net to this one and eventually it will drop. So let's do one thing let's uh, do a packet capture. So in this case, let's here yeah, source IP of 192.168.10.6 with destination of 1.1.1.2 then let's create another packet capture and the 192.168.10.6 right so let's Turn on the filtering in this case. Okay, now let's come to PC2. As you can see, that it has timed out actually here. Okay, now let's come to firewall. And from the command show counter global filter delta yes packet filter yes okay cool so now there is no packet here so now let's do one thing let's come to pc2 and initiate the next session again and let's look at packet capture here yeah now you can see that from this packet capture it says that the flow has been dropped due to source NAT IP address allocation error so basically it is saying 
uh, to us that there is no IP address available. So to further check that, what we can do is we can run command show running IP pool command. So it says like we have one available IP address and that one is used. So that is the reason it is unable to locate the dynamic IP address. Fine. So what we can do in that case is let's exit this session, right? And now let's come to IP pool. It will take a while for session to finish. Let's take association all, no active session. Yeah, now you can see that zero used, one available, okay? Now let's go to our PC2 and try to initiate telnet connection. You see, telnet connection is there. Okay, now let's come here and do show session all. You can see that now this time 10.6 got translated to 1.1.1.200. So this is how we can uh, do dynamic NAT lab. Okay, next thing uh, we can uh, do with dynamic NAT is there is another there is another option of dynamic NAT fallback. So what we can do is we can configure interface IP address in this case. So what we will do is as a fallback, we are configuring 1.1.1.8 over here. So uh, what they say is whenever this dynamic IP pool is not available, it will use this interface IP address. Okay, so let's do okay here. Let's commit. Let's log out from this session. Okay, now the has been completed. Now let's initiate connection from PC1. Okay, let's check on firewall. Fine, so we can see this time 10.5 has been translated to dynamic NAT IP of 1.200. Now let's do one thing. Let's initiate the connection from PC2 and now this time it got connected to okay now we can see here that this PC2 IP address it has been source translated to 1.1.1 so that say to us that the fallback has happened fine okay so this is all about dynamic IP uh, this is how we can configure dynamic IP address on forward to firewall okay next we'll take a look at let me delete this one advanced no okay let's take a look at dynamic ip and port so in this case let's say if we configure dynamic ip and uh, port for translated address uh, let's give ip here 1.1.1.100 okay and this session to none okay let's do commit so what is expected here is in this case, we should see that the source port has been 
changed for the connection that is initiated on the client side okay so let's try and initiate connection again let's exit off here let's exit up here also okay so the push has completed now let's initiate telnet connection sorry let's check on the firewall for this session okay so now Okay. Now, if you look at the session, it is coming from 10.5 and the translation is happening on 1.100 as we mentioned. But the source port this time has changed from 559.75 to 7.8.0.6. Right? So, this is what the expected behavior is with dynamic IP and port it uses. The same IP address, but it assigns a different source port. Now let's initiate the connection from PC2. And let's check now session. Now we can see that there is a new session and it has again changed the source port and the translated source port is also different okay so this is what basically the uh, dynamic ip and port translation address looks like so here in this dynamic ip and port we can uh, mention the ip address we can mention the subnet we can also uh, mention the range of IP address you know okay so this is basically a lab for dynamic IP and dynamic IP and port okay in uh, next lab we will take a look at destination that okay and we'll do the lab for it so if you have any questions please comment if you suggest uh, if you want in if you if you can suggest any changes i need to do in my videos that also please suggest i'll try to improve myself thanks for your time you have a good day bye